The bank is suing me. My home is worth 1 million RMB, i.e. 145,000 US dollars. The down payment is 300,000 RMB. The loan is 700,000 RMB. And the monthly payment is 4,200 RMB, i.e. 610 US dollars. Last year, for special reasons, I had no choice but to stop the mortgage payment. At that time, I found out that I still had a loan of 680,000 RMB. Out of the 120,000 RMB, or 17,400 US dollars in total, I had paid through monthly payments over two years. Only 20,000 RMB was for the principal and 100,000 RMB or 14,500 US dollars was for the interest. Even a bank robber doesn't make as much as a banker. The bank sued me and the court ruling has come out. The mortgage is cut off. All my bank cards are frozen, including the 1.8 RMB in my WeChat wallet. Also, I have incurred more than 100,000 RMB in default fees, attorney fees, property preservation fees and so on. The court informed me that the home would soon be put up for auction. The appraisal was 880,000 RMB and the starting price at the auction was 70% of the appraisal, which is about 600,000 RMB. There are too few people buying homes now. If the first auction is not successful, the result of the second auction will be worse. If the first auction were taken at the starting price, I would have lost my home, the down payment and owed the bank tens of thousands of RMB, plus the 120,000 RMB I paid before. After calculation, I would have lost 600,000 RMB or 87,000 US dollars. An important sign of China's deteriorating economy is the significant increase in the number of foreclosed homes in 2022. According to the China Index Academy, there were over 600,000 foreclosed homes listed for auction in 2022. China Index Academy says this is a historically high number. Sichuan, a southwestern province, topped the list of foreclosed homes with 66,000 units. This was followed by Guangdong province in the south, Henan province in the center, and Jiangsu province in the east. The city with the highest number of foreclosures was Chongqing, one of the four municipalities directly under the jurisdiction of the central government. This set of data also shows that the number of foreclosure listings in China was 447,000 in 2021 and surged by 35.7% in 2022. The size of foreclosures rose to 1.4 trillion RMB, or over 203 billion US dollars. It's important to note that various kinds of official data in China are usually retouched. We are choosing to use this data as a way to observe the trend of China's economic progress. However, we have reservations about whether this data is authentic. Some of the research data from private companies in China are quite different from the official data. For example, Shanghai Wei Ri Assets and Dolphin Housing Data Research Institute released a white paper on judicial auction real estate industry. It counted the number of foreclosure listings on seven major judicial auction platforms in China in 2020 and 2021 and found there were 669,200 foreclosure homes in 2020 and 758,200 in 2021. Both figures surpassed the record high of 606,000 units in 2022, as shown by the China Index Research Institute. The figures from China's Ali platform are even more staggering. The Ali platform is one of the seven online judicial auction platforms recognized by China's Supreme People's Court and is also the largest one. Data from this platform shows that the number of foreclosed homes on this platform alone was 500,000 in 2019. 1.33 million in 2020, the year the epidemic broke out, and rose to 1.68 million in 2021. At the time, some economic analysts believed that the number of foreclosures in China would exceed 2 million in 2022. After the media exposed the alarming figures on the platform, Ali's auction platform has stopped showing directly the number of foreclosure listings across the country since March 2022. In this episode, we still examine China's official data, that is, the data from the China Index Research Institute. The economics of foreclosures reveals a major trend in China's economic development because housing is the most important asset for the Chinese people. The happiness of the average Chinese can be linked to the purchase of real estate, but many people are now in a tough spot. They are beginning to wonder if they made the right decision to buy a home. It's the end of the day. I've been working my butt off just to live a life where I don't need to worry about food and clothing and to impress the people who tramp me down. I've lived three years like that, 
and now I'm back to square one. Many of my relatives say that the biggest mistake of my life is to have bought an apartment. They say that women should not buy a home, but marry a man who has a home and a car. In their concept, women have to rely on men for living. But now it's the 21st century. Men are also very practical. No man wants to help a worthless woman. There is a relationship called an exchange of equal values. In the past, when I called home, I could say I was in good health and everything was fine. But that was my best older self. Now it's gone. The apartment we bought now, with the agent's fee, cost more than 4.8 million RMB, or about 700,000 US dollars. It's located outside the Fifth Ring Road in Beijing, in the Changping District. The home was built in 2000 and is 23 years old. It is a typical old building with many broken pavements in the neighborhood. No elevator, mediocre property, and a lot of bicycles stacked on the first floor. At that time, the down payment was four million RMB, and it exhausted the savings accumulated from two generations of frugality. The construction size of the apartment is 103 square meters. The usable area is more than 90 square meters. That is 968 square feet. Because there is no elevator, the seniors are getting old. And it wouldn't be convenient for them to go up and down the stairs. We bought the bottom floor. I have read a blogger who said that basically there's no comfort in a home in Beijing that costs less than 1.45 million U.S. dollars. So is it worth spending 700,000 U.S. dollars on such a home? According to the analysis of China Index Research Institute, foreclosures mainly originate from debt disputes, and high volumes of pending auctions are mostly located in the Midwest, Yangtze River Delta, and Pearl River Delta regions, where the number of bankrupt companies is high in recent years. In 2022, the discount rates for residential, commercial, and industrial foreclosures in China were 84.8 percent, 71.9 percent, and 84.6 percent, respectively. All down about five percentage points. In other words, all three types of foreclosed properties were in fact sold at lower prices. Although the number of foreclosure listings in China rose and prices fell in 2022, the actual number of sales was less than 20 percent compared to 2021. The total volume fell by 14.9 percent. That means fewer businesses or individuals can afford to buy a foreclosed home in 2022 as well. Highlighting the vicious cycle of a sluggish real estate market in China, it's worth noting that even according to the statistics of China Index Research Institute, it's clear that residential homes are the mainstay of foreclosures. In 2021, residential homes accounted for over 50 percent. In 2022, the number of residential listings increased by 34.6 percent year over year. This is not surprising. We have analyzed in previous episodes how the Chinese real estate industry is a Ponzi scam. That is, it has a massive bubble. It's a chain that relies on constantly pushing up housing prices to keep the housing market hot all the time, using future funds to carry on the momentum. If this chain is interrupted by whatever factor, a real estate crisis would break out quickly. Since the pandemic in Wuhan in late 2019 and through the end of 2022, wave after wave of the outbreak has resulted in many wage earners being quarantined collectively or at home, unable to work and losing their means of livelihood. Since the beginning of 2023, major companies have been laying off employees drastically. Baidu's live streaming business has cut 90% of its staff straight away. The severity of this layoff is literally eliminating the entire business line. When a big company like Baidu makes a move like this, people from the other companies in the business are also panicking. Now everyone is anxious. The feeling I have of being in this industry is that it's useless to pump myself up for someone insignificant like me. 今天要聊的话题是裁员。我朋友呢是在阿里系的一家房产公司。My friend is in a real estate company. Before the 2023 Chinese New Year, they already made a round of layoffs, cutting 50% of the employees, keeping only 20% of the people compared to the initial number of employees. After the Chinese New Year, he told me he didn't have the desire to stay in the company anymore. 
He was also ready to leave the company and started looking for new job opportunities. But he found that there were no good job opportunities. I am in an education company. Over the past two years, because of the national policy of double reductions, that is, reducing students' homework and extracurricular training, in a year and a half, our company has carried out four to five rounds of layoffs. Recently, there is going to be another big round of layoffs on the way. Previously, three to four staff were responsible for a project, but now one person is responsible for three or four projects or even more. People haven't changed. The project hasn't changed either. In the end, where has the change occurred? At the beginning of the year, I lost my job because of layoffs. At first, I didn't realize the severity of the situation, and I entered a hellish mode of job hunting. Either the salary was too high, or the position was cancelled. I was rejected for all kinds of reasons. I repeatedly revised my resume and kept lowering my standards, but I still couldn't get any response, which caught me off guard. As a graduate with a master's degree, I'm really at loss about what to do. Just after the first month of Chinese New Year, our company is about to lay off employees. The company has decided to lay off employees with no notice. It's done by a way of slashing salary, forcing us to resign on our own initiative. Currently, our base pay is 10,000 RMB. Without any notice to us, the boss directly instructed the finance department to reduce our pay by half. We didn't know until the 15th of this month that the boss had made the decision without our knowledge. We all thought it was unreasonable. The sudden onset of unemployment, business closures, and even bankruptcy have made many Chinese people suddenly find it extremely difficult to continue their mortgages. I really regret buying this home. It's a multi-story house that my husband and I bought in the suburb of Hezhe in 2019. The total area is 136.8 square meters, or roughly 449 square feet. When we bought it, it had a parking space and storage room tied to it. The parking space was 95,000 RMB and the storage room was over 50,000. The total was 1.07 million RMB or 155,000 US dollars. We paid 400,000 RMB down. The loan was for 670,000 RMB or 97,000 US dollars for 29 years with a monthly repayment of over 6,900 RMB. In the first three years, we paid off the loan for the parking space. Now we need to pay back more than 4,400 RMB per month, which is about 640 US dollars. At that time, I thought I was working on my business anyway, and the business was growing, so it wasn't a big deal to pay the mortgage every month. The main thing is that I want my children to have a better education, so I bought this so-called school district home. But it's all in Fate's hands. After three years of the epidemic, a family has closed a store and a small processing plant. The business is going straight down. Recently, it's gotten worse. It's extremely bad. We haven't done any business for nearly three months under these conditions. Even if we don't buy anything, don't spend any money, we still have to pay the mortgage. It's heartbreaking to think that your hard-earned money is not at your disposal. What exactly does a buyer of a home in China face when he or she defaults on a mortgage payment? First, the bank will make calls to get the money. After a mortgage defaults, the bank will first try to collect the payment. If the collection is unsuccessful, the penalty interest will start to accrue. Failure to make payments for six consecutive months will trigger the procedure of freezing a property. If there is still no way to repay the loan, it will enter the judicial process. At this stage, the bank will file a lawsuit or arbitration. Finally, the home is auctioned. After obtaining a legal ruling, the bank has the right to enforce it through the court. By now, all assets under the borrower's name will be seized, frozen, and transferred or auctioned. In other words, the whole process will take less than a year at the shortest and two to three years or more at the longest. Because of the high penalty for late mortgage payments, the longer it drags on, the worse it is for those who default on their mortgages. Some homeowners are auctioning at unusually low prices in order to close quickly. In addition, court enforcement costs as well as attorney's fees, litigation costs, and preservation costs will need to be borne by the person who defaults on the mortgage. In addition to the financial loss incurred from a defaulted mortgage, it will also be extremely damaging to one's credit history. The person will be listed in the blacklist of China's banking credit system, which will affect many aspects of one's life.
It can be said that a home buyer becomes a total loser when he or she defaults on a mortgage in China. No one would make such a choice unless they were at the end of their rope. I can't believe that buying a home can make me bankrupt now. I hope my personal experience can give you some lessons. This is the real estate certificate of seven suites in my name. I promise I'm not showing off my wealth. These homes used to be my pride and joy and my security of life. I bought many because I saw the price of homes kept going up. I wanted to make some money by investing in real estate. But now I think these homes are time bombs. You look at this home I live in now. It looks well decorated, and the loan is only over 2 million RMB. That is 290,000 US dollars. Now I still live in it, but in a few months I don't know if this home will still be mine. The renovation costs hundreds of thousands of dollars, all of which was borrowed. At that time, I didn't have cash on me to buy the home. I was able to borrow money easily because people saw that I had so many homes. Now that they know I can't afford the mortgages, they all come to demand their money. Last night, I didn't sleep much. I have lost my job the day before. These days, I hardly sleep. The company I work for has been in business for 13 years, and now it's closing down. It doesn't want to compensate its employees, so it's really adding salt to the wound. I don't dare to let my mother know that. After paying this month's loan, I won't have any money to make another payment. I still have three children and an elderly mother to support. The video publisher also said that some of his seven homes were second mortgages, and all of them had loans attached to them. And now they couldn't be sold even if the prices were reduced. So there is a high probability that many of the properties in his hands would be foreclosed. If we go by the data from Ali's platform, in 2022 there should be more than two million Chinese families or businesses on this desperate path, becoming losers who virtually lose everything or even become heavily in debt. Some people may think that those who bought multiple properties are too greedy, which has led to their tragedy today. That's not necessarily true. In China, people's cash on hand is insecure, shrinking due to inflation, and there are almost no safe bank products of any kind. As a result, interest savings in the hot real estate market and rising housing prices have become the hope for many Chinese to preserve and increase the value of their money. If the home price keeps rising, everything would seem fine. But once the price falls, it exposes all kinds of hidden problems. For example, when the home you bought has dropped in price, you have to pay the difference to the bank. Because the home price has gone down, the bank's appraisal has gone down too. The bank requires the homeowner to pay a portion of the principal, about 500,000 RMB or 73,000 US dollars. This is a matter that many people are discussing, and they are skeptical and don't believe it, wondering how such an article and purchase contract can exist. But if you look at the mortgage contract, you will see that this requirement is valid and legal. Let me give you an example. Three years ago, you bought a home in Shenzhen worth 1.45 million US dollars, and with a 70% loan, you could borrow 1.01 million from the bank. In the past two years, due to the combination of factors such as the economic downturn and the frequent occurrence of various black swan incidents, real estate has continued to suffer. Now the home you bought has gone down in price to 1.16 million, and with a 70% loan, you can borrow up to 813,000. There is a difference of 200,000 US dollars. Between the loan value, it is a risk gap for the bank. The bank has long taken this scenario into account. So, when signing the mortgage contract, it has included an article where differences have to be paid. Similar events are unfolding in cities across China, with homeowners still having to make up the difference in their bank loans. Home prices are plummeting, and worst of all, there is literally no way to sell a home. The selling price of this area reached 210,000 RMB per square meter. At that point in time, someone came out and said that in another two years, the price of this area would be slashed in half. I believe we would all feel that this person was sick and insane. But the end of 2021, this neighborhood introduced a home price guidance: 130,000 RMB a square meter. It's much cheaper compared to the market price. In the beginning, people didn't take this guide price seriously. But today, the market doesn't seem to be what it used to be. Some of the second-hand homes in this area were sold at a surprisingly low price of less than 100,000 RMB per square meter.
This is only a snapshot. Home prices in many neighborhoods of Shenzhen have shrunk by one half. It can be said that the property value has been slashed. However, the good thing is that these homes have been resold, and the original owners have gotten cash. But there is a group of people who are miserable. That is, because of the restrictive buying policy, they can't sell their homes and can't repay their home loans. They participated in the roll call to buy a new home in 2020. They thought they had made a lot of money by buying a home and completely ignored the fact that they might not be able to pay their mortgage, which ranged from 3,000 to 6,000 US dollars a month. Now, not only can't they afford the loan, they can't sell the home because new homes aren't allowed to be put up for sale within three years. It's not like you can sell it whenever you want. Some homeowners have become aware of their risks and are trying to pay off their loans early if they can. But Chinese banks are also in a difficult position, as we have described in previous episodes, because there is a huge financial risk in China and banks can hardly save themselves. Against this backdrop, some banks are delaying as much as possible and not letting homeowners pay off their loans early so that they can get more interest. How is it so difficult for you to take payments? Why is it so difficult to accept money? No video allowed. I pay back the money to you. How come you have so many difficulties and refuse to accept it? You take the money and it's done. You want me to come earlier? I'm here now and I can repay the loan. Why don't you, the bank, take the money? This is so bad. We pay you the money now and you just take it now. There is a good chance that foreclosures will increase in China in the near future. The reason for this is not only the large number of unemployed workers and bankrupted businesses, but there is another major factor. The plummeting population due to the epidemic. This should be a deep secret of the Chinese Communist Party, and this secret will affect not only the Chinese real estate industry, but perhaps the world will feel its black vibe.